with news that rocked my world. Furman, I had an incredible weekend. I went trick-or-treating with the kids. We had a great Halloween party. Titans win effectively the AFC South. It appeared in overtime come back from a 14-point deficit. And then, I'm not even kidding about this, as I am preparing to take my kids to school this morning, yes, I take my kids to school every morning. Oftentimes, I walk them. Uh, This is dad life. I looked down at my phone and I actually thought to myself, should I tell my 11-year-old who's in a fantastic mood because he had Halloween, he's got a big pile of candy in his his room, should I tell him that Derrick Henry, his childhood idol, is potentially out for the season after a foot injury? And I was like, ah, I probably should tell him because he's going to find out sooner or later. And He looked like I felt immediately, Furman. This was a gut punch of the highest order because I was starting to think, hey, not only are the Titans going to win the AFC South now, you can look at the rest of the calendar and think they might end up with the number one overall seed in the AFC. In fact, this morning, they were just a little bit of an underdog behind the Bills, a team they have the tiebreak over now to be the AFC number one seed and now Derrick Henry may be out for the rest of the season. What does this do to Titans handicapping from your perspective? Well, bigger question here. What's more important in the Travis household? Is it the Titans getting to the Super Bowl with a chance to win one in Los Angeles or the Braves being able to close out the Houston Astros? Then we can get into the impact of Derrick Henry and what I think, your boys well, the Titans fan base is a, for me, longer term fan base. I mean, I would love to see the Braves win. My son would love to see the Braves win. It's a great question. I think in general, football is at the apex of the Travis family household sports interest. So uh, I think if we had a choice between the Braves winning the World Series or the Titans winning the Super Bowl, uh, the Travis boys in the household and certainly the Travis mom in the household would all vote for the Titans to win the Super Bowl. All right, that's a fair assessment. I just had to get that out there first and foremost. But there's no doubt Derrick Henry's absence will be felt by an offense where everything has been built around the human battering ram and what Derrick Henry has meant. I mean, play action works off of his ability to keep lighter boxes up front, the one-on-one coverage that receivers like A.J. Brown and Julio Jones are able to get on the outside. Now suddenly this offense is a lot easier to prepare for. I'm not buying Adrian Peterson coming in there, suddenly erasing all the question marks they have with the ground game. Jeremy McNichols, we'll see if the Titans still have a trade up their sleeve before the deadline tomorrow. But at the same time, I mean, now it's just that much more important for Ryan Tannehill to be able to have his receivers healthy, to have the Julio Jones acquisition really pay dividends, to make A.J. Brown the true number one that we saw glimpses of yesterday in that win against the Indianapolis Colts. But I'm curious to see how fast and how multiple this Titans offense can adjust and adapt. This weekend against the Rams, it was an uphill battle to begin with. I think it only gets more pronounced. And going forward, there's no doubt that this takes them away from, you know, contender status in the AFC, in my opinion, to maybe being in that second tier. I just don't know if they'll have the pieces that you need to go on the road into potentially Western New York and win an AFC championship should they advance that far. What? So Adrian Peterson, for those who don't know, reportedly being signed by the Titans, he's a big physical back. In fact, if you were pointing to someone who is the, uh, you know, Derrick Henry would be the heir apparent of. They are similar in the way that they run. Obviously, Adrian Peterson now 36 years old, about a decade older than Derrick Henry roughly. But I'm curious, Furman, for handicapping purposes, we don't know how quickly Derrick Henry will be able to come back. I've heard there's some optimism that he could be back for the playoffs. Titans now minus 5,000 uh, to be the winner of the uh, AFC South which would mean they would host at least one playoff game maybe in the wild card round if they were able to still get the number one seed they'd obviously get to skip another week. If Derrick Henry were able to come back healthy in the postseason how does that change your handicapping ability uh, going forward? I mean, it's a big if. And so I think what you're going to see at sportsbooks like FanDuel, they're going to be relatively cautious in terms of adjusting the odds on the Titans to win the AFC in the Super Bowl. They'll come down a little bit, but there's no reason to create a ton of perceived value when you have that uncertainty around Derrick Henry. Because if this team does figure out its passing attack and they look as formidable moving the football without Henry, you add a key cog back in the fold and suddenly you really have something brewing here. The defense has clearly shown market improvement in recent weeks. I'm still a little bit skeptical in terms of what this unit is going to look like as the season progresses. Uh, But at this point, I think the division clearly well within their reach. 
But you do begin to wonder if you drop a game against the Rams. Uh, I think they have a tough opponent that eludes me in two weeks as well. The Colts schedule isn't all that difficult. And suddenly it's not a foregone conclusion that Tennessee is finishing atop the AFC South heap. I still think they do win that division because they built themselves such a nice cushion. But at the same time, their prospects to go deep, especially in inclement weather, this team looks a little bit more one-dimensional. And We'll see what Ryan Tannehill can do as the true leader of the offense. I'll point out uh, the Titans going forward only have right now two teams left on the schedule with winning records. One of them is the Rams who just traded for Von Miller as if they weren't good enough already. The other team with a winning record right now is the New Orleans Saints who just lost Jameis Winston to the year with an ACL tear. So at least for purposes of trying to figure out uh, what kind of difficulty awaits the Titans. They've got the Texans twice. They've got the Jags. Again, seven of the nine remaining teams right now have losing records. The Dolphins are in there. So it's at least worth thinking about what they might be capable of even without Derrick Henry. By the way, from an odds maker perspective, how much does the line change based on Derrick Henry being out? So for me, it's going to go a lot based on opponent going forward. Obviously, if teams are a little bit leaky against the run, Henry has a much bigger impact. But initially, I'll make a two-point adjustment for Derrick Henry. Now, if you combine that with Julio Jones, who's been in and out of the lineup, you could be talking about downgrading this Titans offense a field goal or more, especially when they step up in class against the elite defenses. And the main reason for that, the term we use industry-wide, is cluster injuries. Because suddenly, if I'm a defensive coordinator preparing for the Titans, I no longer have to game plan for three weapons. I have to game plan for one. And any team worth its salt that at least has NFL caliber defenders can neutralize one piece of the offense. We'll see what this ground attack looks like and how big a fall off there is. We'll also see if other weapons can emerge in the passing game to take some of the burden off of A.J. Brown.